Hello everyone, how's it going? Doctor Incompetent here, and let's play some Dinkum, shall we? Doing a complete beginner's guide here with the Bloom and Spring update live in 2023. So I'm going to start up a brand new game. I'm going to walk you through how to understand the game's controls, the UI, the systems, some basic tips and strategy, and show you through playing what you want to do when you get started in this game, but not in any kind of spoilery way or anything like that. I'm going to just explain the basics and the fundamentals so you can enjoy Dinkum at your own pace because it is a fantastic and relaxing crafting survival colony building game that gives you some nice Stardew Valley notes while having a very unique personality all its own. So here we go. So immediately you get to kind of customize your person and you definitely see that the people in this game resemble perhaps Animal Crossing, which is another good legacy to draw from. And let's just pick ourselves a fun hairstyle here. Uh, actually, I think this one is okay, but uh, I'd like to make myself more in tune to the channel avatar. And those eyes are okay. There we go. And do we like that nose? I think it's fine. And I like that smile as well. And we can put ourselves in a blue shirt. And I think we're looking good. Normally, I like to put a beard on my characters. Uh, but that is not a thing in this game, as I believe you are preternaturally young. So, let's go ahead and give ourselves a name. Now, I'm playing on PC using a controller, by the way. I enjoy using a controller for this game. Doctor, uh, let's see, and... Oh, we'll just say Dr. Incomp. Tutorial. And the T is for tutorial. Go. What's the island's name? Well, we'll just call it Tutorial Island. Oh, how about this? And there we go. Okay. A long time ago, everything went south. Almost everybody was forced to move to South City. The people of South City lived cold and miserable lives. You were born here. Most people have no desire to leave. But you do more than anything. You might have found a way out. Help wanted. Looking for a young go-getter to accompany me to my old home tutorial. Voyage and accommodation will be your initial... Okay. Help wanted. You leave for tutorial today. We're answering a help wanted query. I couldn't read that in time before it faded. I didn't push anything to, to cue the cutscene. It's just moving at its own pace here. I'm leaving on a hot air balloon with a grandmotherly woman to a place called Tutorial. And by hot air balloon, I suppose I should say blimp or zeppelin. We are now flying over Tutorial. And we'll be landing shortly. Look how colorful this is compared to that terrible South City. All passengers, please prepare to leave the airship. How about airship? That's the real terminology. Whoa. Looks like we've landed. She's standing very close. I'll tell you what. I'm so glad you decided to accompany me on this adventure, Dr. Incomp. Her name is Fletch, and you can see by her 
undulations and a pink firework and star explosions that she's pleased. I was starting to think no one in South City was brave enough to join me. Oh, I'm very brave. When you were the first and only person to respond to my ad, I knew you were the right person for the job. She's laughing. She's having a great time with this. Oh dear, look at old Fletch waffle on. Let's get cracking, Dr. Income. I'll see you outside, okay? Okay. And right away, we can now play. The game is telling us that we can move around with the left stick. In the upper left corner, you'll see that it's 10 a.m. You'll see what day it is. You'll see our health and you'll see our energy. So pretty common stuff for a uh, Stardew-like game. And in the bottom center of the heads-up display or HUD, you'll see that I have eight items that I kind of equip on an action bar. And this, unlike Stardew, is a 3D game that uh, you view your character from above and you can move the camera with the right stick, tilting it around and move along with the left stick. Let's talk to Fletch. Wow. Smell that fresh air. It smells great. I'll tell you what, it feels good to finally be back on tutorial. Now, Dr. Incompetent, I'm going to need your help getting settled, okay? I'll give you this base tent. Take your time and find a good place for it. It'll be like our town hub. Take this map as well. If you have any questions, please just ask me. I haven't been back to tutorial for a very long time, but I think I can still be helpful. She's blushing. I'll be waiting by this dock until you set up the base tent. So if you get lost, just check your map to find a dock again. Good luck. Okay. So we've received a base tent, a base of operations. Okay. Oh, we also got an island map. Pins can be placed on it to mark points of interest. And now you can see in the upper right, we do indeed have a mini map. And we can push up on the directional pad to open the map. Zoom in and out using up and down on the right stick. Move the map cursor around with the left stick. And we can, you know, push A or X on the controller, depending. I'm using a um, Xbox-style controller, so it's A. And it opens up this list of pins. And you can then pick something you want to put here. You can select the pin and make it shiny by pushing A one more time. Uh, to really have it stand out because you only have like a few options so if you want to make one more distinct you can do this but you then can push x to turn off the shine and then x again to take away something that you've pinned and then push b to close your map now they're telling us to push start to go into our bag and this brings up our inventory you can see on the left right here we have our equipment we have a blue t-shirt and some blue shorts so you can have a hat, some glasses, uh, and some boots. And then this is all of the items that you can hold here in the middle in your inventory. And then you can also put stuff down here on your hot bar. Let's move over here and put down this base camp. Now, every time you play, your island is going to be procedurally generated. So it'll look different than mine. Now, I'm going to put our base camp maybe over here, up here on this dirt, instead of by the sand. So you can push B to jump, and you can then push X to use whatever is in your inventory, whatever you're holding. Now you see I picked up a log that was on the ground just by pushing A, and you can use the right bumpers to switch between what is down here in your hotbar. And I'm going to put the base tent, I'm going to push X to use it, and then it says... Um, okay, it opens up this little menu where it's trying to deploy it, but it's telling me someone's in the way. And so when you can't build it, it's white, not on level ground. There's like the no, you can't do that sign. But then when you can, it becomes green. And you can see you can put it down by pushing X or you can rotate it by pushing Y. I'm going to rotate it oriented out this way. I like this just fine. And I'm going to push it down right there. Is this a good place for the base 10? Yes. 
We got it. So this is where you decided to build, huh? It's absolutely perfect. Our new home here on Tutorial. Thank you so much for setting up the base tent. Well, you're welcome. Oh, and guess what? I actually have a tent for you, too. I know it's not much, but it'll be a place you can call home. Now, there's plenty of room to spread out here on Tutorial. So please take your time to place your tent. You'll probably be visiting the base tent a fair bit. So keep that in mind when you're looking for a spot to claim as your own. I'll be inside the base tent getting things ready. Come and speak to me once you've placed your tent. You've received a tent. A place to live when you don't have a house yet. And we don't. So in some ways, this game is like an amalgam between Stardew, Animal Crossing, and also Terraria, where you're making a house for people and you want them to kind of move in eventually to your island uh, and give you more access to things. So there's a lot of cool stuff and systems that will seem familiar, but at the same time, there are peculiarities to Dinkum. Now we want to put down our tent and you can see how big it is. And we do want to indeed put it next to grandma's base tent just for convenience. So we can't build it here because the ground isn't level, but we certainly could build it right over here. Now, is that close enough? I think it's close enough for me, but you could build yours definitely closer or further depending on how you want to, um, how close you want to be to grandma. I'm actually going to kind of position it, oh, right there. Is this a good place for the tent? Yes. All right. I'm going to push X and just pick up that log. And now look at this. We've built our tent. And you can walk in. And you have a little place right in here. And you have a mailbox. But there's no mail. And right now we can't do much because we don't have any tools. We can gather stuff like logs. And by the way, this cool, uh, you know, kangaroo won't hurt us a lot of the wildlife that's around the starting area is pretty placid and you can pick up these shells great and I recommend when you're feeling frisky exploring and just picking up as much as you can now I'm going to just pick up all of these shells and then go talk to grandma. Now, why am I picking up shells, you say? Well, first of all, let's pause the game and let's go into our inventory. Look down here. These are all the shells that I've picked up and the logs. You'll notice right away that everything stacks automatically. So you can carry a large stack of items. It takes no energy, the lightning bolt bar in the upper left, the orange one, to pick things up. And you have no encumbrance. You can carry as much weight as you want, but you have to worry about each square of your inventory filling up with a stack so you can if you want push y to quick move these items from your hot bar up into your inventory so that you reserve this for only tools and stuff because these don't necessarily have a use in the game but what are shells good for well shells are good for selling you're going to need to make money in this game and it's going to become apparent apparent very quickly so let's go in and talk to Fletch. You found a good place for your tent. I know it's not much, but I hope you like your new home. Your home is decidedly better than mine. Uh, I just wanted to say that. I'll tell you what, you've got the spark, Dr. Incompetent. You see, most people back in South City are scared of leaving. There's something about that place that pulls the spark out of people. It looked like there was no spark. It looked like oatmeal. But I'll tell you what, we certainly aren't the first to leave. Have you ever heard of the traveling trader, John? Uh, of course, I know I haven't. I haven't heard of the traveling trader. I'll tell you what, he's a bloody legend. Rumor is he traded a paperclip for a steamboat once. That's a good trade for him. Trading is in his very blood. John got in contact with me before we left South City. He's interested in visiting with his shop here. I'll tell you what. We can't miss an opportunity like this. I reckon we get this visiting site deed ready for him. 
That way, we'll have a place ready for any visitors who come to tutorial. I'll let you decide where the best place for this visiting site deed is. Just be sure it's close nearby. Ha 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 ha. We want visitors to feel like a part of the tutorial community while they're here. Who knows? Maybe we can convince him to set up a permanent shop here. Be sure to talk to me once you've placed the visiting site deed. You've received the visiting site deed. A place for visitors to easily set up camp. All right, so we need to go put this down. So the visiting site that we're going to put down is like a temporary place for when people visit our island, they hang out here. And what you're going to be trying to do in Dinkum is entice these people eventually to move in if you can meet their requirements. So we want John the Trader so that we can make Dinkums by selling stuff. And let's get a good place for this. Now, I don't mind that this is the temporary place is like right here on the sand. This is totally fine for me. Again, put these wherever you want. Is this a good place? Yes. But now we have a little landing pad and people will come and set up their shop as they visit here or set up whatever it is they want to do. And let's go talk to Gran. So we're all set for visitors, huh? Says Fletch. Indeed we are. Well done. We've only been here for a while, but you've achieved so much already. We actually have had a great first day so far. You're right. Luckily, the time doesn't seem to be moving in the tutorial, so it's stuck here at 10 a.m., which is fantastic. You remind me of my father. He was born right here on tutorial, you know? He was a true blue adventurer through and through. He loved doing new things and keeping track of all his milestones in his adventurer's journal. I wanted to come here and try to meet those milestones myself. But I'm getting a bit long in the tooth. Dr. Incompetent, your teeth are very long. Please, I want you to take his adventurer's journal. Please keep good care of it. This is your adventure now. All right. So we got the adventurer's journal, and it's filled with his past milestones. Now, this is huge for us. That journal means a lot to me. But I think my dad would be glad someone like you is looking after it. But I have a challenge for you, Dr. Incompetent. I want you to try and beat my father's milestones. Some of these milestones are going to take a long time to complete, but there is no hurry. I'm also going to add daily tasks to the journal. These will be smaller milestones that should be easy to complete in just one day. Now for the good part. For every milestone you surpass, you'll be rewarded with permit points. And notice now in the upper right, we have our dinkums, which is the currency in the game. We have 250, and then that's the yellow bar. And then the blue bar in the upper right is our permit points, that little kind of star dollar. And what do we need these for? I'll tell you what, you're going to want a lot of permit points eventually, which is true. But we can talk more about that tomorrow. For now, check out the journal. I think you'll find that you've actually completed some of the milestones inside. So be sure to claim them. Now, are you hungry? I am. I think it's just about lunchtime. Now time is moving. I've seen fruit growing around the island, and that sounds tasty. You go and find us some fruit, and when you get back, I'll show you how to craft a campfire. All right, so now in the upper left, you'll see that we have uh, a quest called Bush Tucker, Find Something to Eat and Talk to Her. You can open the journal uh, by pushing the play button or the select button, depending on which kind of controller you have. Now, this is something that's great about Dinkum. There's all these little milestones that you get. For example, we got this milestone called Shell Yeah. I'm going to click on it, and it says, Shells are nature's way of littering. Haha, ha. here's a milestone for picking up those bad boys. So you see it says we need to pick up 10. We actually have already picked up 12. And for doing so, we get 100 permit points. Then this milestone fills up again, and it says you need to pick up 50 shells to get there. So just by doing things throughout the game, you're going to be completing these milestones, which will get you permit points. And you can use these permit points, uh, as we'll see in a bit with Fletch, to kind of unlock new abilities and some perks and things like that that are incredibly important uh, for our development here on tutorial. And I'm going to push B and go back. We also got the camper milestone for just putting down our tent. We get 100 permit points. 
and then the explorer says, hey, you, uh, you know, built the base camp, so you get 100 for that. Now, the daily milestones, they want us to harvest three bush limes, catch two bugs, and craft an item. Catching a bug is going to be hard because we don't have the uh, proper equipment, but we'll see if we can do that. Bush limes, no problem. Now, here's the deal. I want to just take a moment to say this about Dinkum. I find Dinkum to be a super chill and relaxing game. Sometimes these games, there's so many objectives, there's so much that you want to do. The, um, the day is a limiting factor, like the amount of time that you have in the day goes really fast, and you feel like you just didn't get as much done as you wanted to. That is completely understandable, but let me say this. There's no rush in the game. You aren't you don't have to do anything within a certain amount of time, so just take your time and enjoy it. If you miss one of the daily milestones, that's fine. It's not a prohibitive amount of permit points that you're going to fall behind by missing them. They're just fun things to try and do, and it's great if you can, but if you can't, no sweat. Just go to the next day. I like to take my time and enjoy myself in this game. It's still uh, not complete, still in early access. Things are changing. So there's not like there's some cap where it's like, well, by three days in, you have to have this done. Not at all. Take your time. Enjoy yourself. All right. And I'm going to go out now. And let's talk about harvesting bush limes. So I'm going to kind of walk this way and look for some. Here we go. This tree right here has bush limes growing on it. So you could tell it's just got the limes on it. It's a shorter tree. And when you walk up to it, it says harvest. You push the A button and the limes fall down. And then you can just kind of like pick them up by pushing A around. You see my character because these items went right to the hotbar. He's like carrying it like, hey, notice this oil drum in the ground. You can break this to get resources, but we don't have the pick right now. So we can't do that. Now, I'm going to harvest something called yellow water flower. You'll see that bush had these flowers on it. Here's another one over here. And here's some more yellow wattle flower on the ground. Yellow wattle flower, I'm going to show you. I'm going to put these. I'm going to put all of this stuff up here. These are my bread and butter early game for selling. They give it a surprising amount of money for selling them. Seashells do give a reasonable amount of money too. They're fine for harvesting. Uh, but the problem with harvesting too many things is you'll see, how, look how quickly my inventory has filled up because there's so many different types of seashell. So this could become a problem. We'll build storage later, but I love these flowers for making money. You can just stack these up. And let's see here. Anything else on our little strip? Well, right across the way, I'm going to swim. You, you can swim, no problem. Uh, you can dive down by pushing the dive button uh, to go under the water here. And you'll see that you don't have a breath bar, but look at my energy in the upper left. It's ticking down as I'm underwater. And so if I want to surface, you just push the B button to come up and boom. Now we're not using energy anymore. So you can't stay underwater indefinitely. Now look at that shark over there. You can believe that this shark is mean. Now the shark is not going to get us on the land. Um, but we could pick up some of these shells. And remember, we're making money picking up the shells, but we're also potentially earning some awesome milestones. We just need 50 of these. And we can just run around. Now, most of these shells we already have, so we're just adding to our existing stacks, which is great. We did get the bush uh, lime, so we can go back to her and complete more of the quest. But I'm just going to kind of jump with the B button and go ahead and pick up these bush limes right here. Get some more. And here's some flowers. Yes. Love these things. And terrific. And then some more shells over here. Let's get back to camp. Now you might say, well, where's camp? Uh, you can see it right there just in the distance, but if you go to the map, by pushing up on the directional pad. The base tent and your tent are marked, uh, as well as the visitor's site, even the docks. So these things are just permanent. You don't even have to pin them, and you've got it right there. Okay, Nautilus shell. Now, as I get in the water, I'm using energy to swim. You use the same amount of energy it looks like for being underwater and swimming, but I'm not sure if that's accurate. You might it would seem like you would use more energy by being underwater, like, but it might not be a thing in this game yet. 
just be mindful of your energy because it does not replenish. It's not like, you know, a stamina bar in Zelda. I'm just getting some more shells where Link will replenish stamina just by standing there. Um, that energy is permanently depleted for the day and you can get it back, but it requires, well, eating food, which we're going to do. All right, so I just got a bunch more shells, and actually I got so many shells, I'm going to go to my journal, that we just did the next level of Shell Yeah and got ourselves 100 more permit points. Now it's 250 shells, you know, which is a ton, so it's a little bit more difficult, but hey, no worries. Let's go talk to Fletch about our awesome limes. Oh, you found something to eat. Eating food will help keep your energy up, which is, again, the lightning bolt yellow bar. Here's the recipe for a campfire. I found these stones earlier, so you can use these to craft your campfire. By the way, notice in the bottom left of the screen, all of your daily quests are visible when you're in the base tent here. So you see we did the lime quest. We need to catch bugs and we need to craft something. You'll have to find some wood yourself, though. Feel free to use the crafting table in the base tent to craft a campfire. Take your time. When you're done, come and have a chat with me. I have a gift for you. That's great. Love gifts. So we've received some stone. And we've also received a new crafting recipe, which is for a campfire. So we can go over here to the crafting table. It's this thing with the toolbox and tools on it in the kind of like upper left corner of the base tent. And once you use it, you will come into contact with everything that we can make. We start being able to make a rock path, a crude fence, the campfire, which she just told us, a wooden torch, a cooking table, and another crafting table if you want to build one outside. Now, if you can build it, if you have the requisite ingredients, there is a little box beneath the picture of the item, and if it has a green check mark and it's bordered in green, that means you have the stuff. If you don't, then it, you can see right here, it, there's no check mark. And if I click on it, you could see what the crude fence is, and you can actually track the ingredients if you want to pin the recipe and go make sure you get them. But we don't have any spin effects resin to make this yet, so we can't craft it. Um, or this torch, we need mangrove sticks to make that. The cooking table requires much more serious ingredients, metal and such. Uh, but we can make a campfire. It just takes gum logs and stone, which she gave us. So I'm going to craft it. Boom, boom, boom. There's a little progress bar that fills up, and we got it. You can see in the kind of middle right of the screen, the item showed up and went away. Now we can't make another one because we have no more stone. But, and our hot bar in the bottom of the HUD, you see that we have a campfire. And uh, this item, which is placeable, it has a blue border. So the, the items are kind of like color-coded. You'll see red, yellow, different sorts of things. And we want to put down this campfire. Now, I like to put the campfire just kind of next to the base tent for now. You can always move these things around. You will set yourself on fire with this, so don't put it in a place where you're going to walk. So I'm going to put it off to the side. I'm going to select it using the bumpers. And once it's selected on my hop arm, I'm just going to push uh, X to put it down, and it's down. And now you can see we've actually completed two of the daily quests. And let's see here. I'm very impressed with the work you've done here today. I think there's a great future for us all here at Tutorial. Here's a gift for helping me out so much. It's a bug net. Okay, great. So we could complete this other daily quest. I think you should take the rest of the day off. Maybe you could go catch some of the bugs around here. Or maybe you could cook some of that fruit you found. I'll figure out something to do. You can also go to bed, but I wouldn't if I were you. We have plenty of time. I'm sure you will. Oh, and before I forget, take this sleeping bag too. When you get tired, pop that in the ground and have a lay down. I'll tell you what, a good night's rest will do us both good. Thanks for your help today, Dr. Incompetent. I can't believe we're on tutorial. I can't either. It's great. I couldn't have done any of this without you, says Fletch, and she is so happy. Yes, she is. And we got a bug net to catch creepy crawlies. And we also got a sleeping bag. So, you know, sleeping bag is a placeable item. It's blue background. The bug net has this dark orange background. And you'll notice that there is a green bar in the bottom of the hood 
on the icon for the bug net, which I'm holding because it's selected, that is the durability. So using this will reduce the durability and it will eventually break and we'll have to make another one, you know, Minecraft style. Now, we have some time, as she pointed out, and I'm going to go try to catch some bugs. So there's a butterfly right there. So you kind of go over there and you, you need to swing your bug net with X until you just get it close to that and we caught a scarlet jezebel butterfly now catching butterflies is amazing because they sell well and they're very very easy milestones to get so i'm going to wander over here and i'm just going to pick up some shells while i'm here some feathers too just pick up everything you could check our uh inventory it's fine i'm going to bump up this roo poo hey oh the kangaroo has pooped and i'm picking it up don't ask you'll notice that uh, butterflies have this kind of like teal background as do all bugs and we'll get a shell there's a butterfly over there so i'm gonna go try to get it there's also a fish in the water but uh we need to be able to you know have a fishing pole and oh boy there we go a ulysses butterfly now um bugs are difficult to catch it takes a second to like get the pattern of it down uh, but look at this you'll notice that bugs do not stack. So I have two Scarlet Jezebel butterflies, but they don't stack. They actually take up a good bit of inventory space, which is a bummer, but, um, oh, okay. So these kangaroos and some of these dingoes are reasonable. They won't attack you, um, but just don't attack the animals and you usually are okay. But you'll notice very quickly when the animal is hostile, they usually have like red, dangerous eyes or the music changes so we're okay these animals aren't hurting us now we can't get any of this metal you see here there's like copper there's some iron but we can't get it yet uh, because we don't have the right tools now as i was saying about butterflies and bugs one of the reasons i'm going to pick up all of these logs by the way just everything i can while i've got time we got another accomplishment which is uh, harvest master for picking up stuff and so we just get some points for doing that and let's claim all of our daily tasks so I'm gonna go over here oops um, to the daily milestones and let's see uh, she wants to place the sleeping bag yeah we can totally do that uh, maybe those are claimed at the end of the day or maybe we need to be at the bulletin board let me see about that Maybe you can't physically claim those tasks until the day is over. It's been a while since I've played Dinkum, so we're going to have to see how that interaction works. But I like to just gather everything I can. Remember, you're getting milestones, and you're going to need all of these ingredients to sell. Butterflies, let me finally finish my thought on this. Bugs, there is going to be a person who might want to move in, or at least will visit our island, who collects oddities like bugs. And for the first one of every species that you give this person, you get like a bonus of stuff. Uh, so it's really valuable to have these things beyond just the cash. And that's a new butterfly for us, a blue moon butterfly. So each bug that you can catch that's of a, a unique type uh, is a win. You still get stuff for subsequent bugs, but it's not as much as for that first one. All right, I'm picking up flowers and stuff. What time is it? 6.08 p.m.? Okay, I'm going to start heading back. Remember, if you don't know where to go, you can just push up to open your map, zoom out, and you can even, you know, pin your house, but I see it over here. It's fine. Now, a little tip. Whenever you're moving around... Try to cross the islands at the shortest possible gap that you have to swim. Don't try to swim for like a mile because it's going to destroy your energy. By the way, you can push X to use the item or you can use um, the, the trigger. And let's see here. There's my house or there's a base camp. We're getting close to house. And there's a shell for us. You'll notice that there is a night and day cycle in the game. It affects a lot of things. Um, but you see Fletch here out there. It affects like if shops are open, if people are inside or outside, and the danger level 
Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go to my inventory. I'm actually going to put these limes back on my hotbar so I can select it and I'm just going to insert it by pushing X onto the fire and I can burn this baby up. Now you want to just cook this lime, all right, and it will pop off and pick it up and you've got a cooked bush lime. Now what's the big deal about that? Well, guess what? I'm going to go down and show you. So let me actually put these up here so the tooltip's a little easier to see. A cooked bush lime gives you six energy and four health back, whereas a regular bush lime gives you just two hearts and three energy. It lets you bury it, though, if you want to plant them. Uh, but we don't have the technology to do that yet, but they're much, much better cooked is, you know, the short answer there for restoring your stats. Now, you can only cook one bush lime at a time right here. So the in an ideal world, you have a ton of fires so you can cook more than one. But unfortunately, where we are in the game, we don't have any stone. So we kind of have to wait until we can get some more tools. But that's totally fine. Now, it's only 7.23 p.m. So, you know, nothing wrong with that. We have plenty of time to do stuff. Now, another thing that you can do... I'm going to pick up this when it finishes cooking and just put another one on there. I'm going to go talk to uh, Fletch. You can just talk to her. We've done some good work today. Take the rest of the day off. We've got more work to do tomorrow. You can ask her about crafting, cooking, bug hunting, sleeping, or you can just say I'm on it. Thanks again for your help. You can go right to sleep if you want, but I don't want to. I'm happy where we're at. It doesn't appear with this fire that you know like in valheim or some other games with cooking that you can burn it if you leave it on there too long it just automatically pops off so you could just kind of throw one down there and then just run off into the sunset and well it looks like we can collect a bunch of shells which i will oh here's a bug it's a spider great All right. In case this wasn't obvious, by the way, from what you've read about the game, we are in the Outback, the Australian Outback. So you know, a lot of the biome uh, reflects that in terms of the plants, the animals, the dialect that the characters speak, the slang, the jargon that they use. You're going to learn some really awesome words in this game. All right, let's go ahead and pick these things up. We need a lot of logs. We need a lot of bush limes. I'm not going to eat any food right now because energy is not a concern. We're actually not doing anything that's too strenuous. But we will quite rapidly. And you want to have as much food nearby as you can. Is this a new butterfly? No, it's just a Scarlet Jezebel. But it's still a butterfly nonetheless. Wow, look at all these shells. It's just such a fun and relaxing thing. Like, how many games do you get to just go running around on the beach collecting seashells? And these shells can become profitable, potentially. All right, I'm going to pick up this. All right, it's getting late, and so I don't want to be out when it's too dark. I'm going to run this way. I'm going to head over here and jump up. All right, tremendous. And let me go pick up my cooked lime, put another one down there. I'm going to go into the old tent, and I'm going to put down the sleeping bag. I'm going to select it, and I'm just going to push X. You can place this wherever you like. I like to put it over here in the corner. And we'll place it, and then there we go. We have a place to sleep. And whenever we want to rest, we can. And this is done. So I'm going to put down some more uh, limes. I'm going to go into my inventory. I'm just going to... I like to keep things tidy uh, so that only my tools and such are on the hotbar. You can push A to kind of move things around if you want. You could split the stack with the X button. 
Uh, but I'm happy with where we're at. Just going to cook another one. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Get that last milestone so we get 100 permit points for cooking some fruit, which is amazing. And it's 9.17 p.m. I'm going to go ahead and, and call it a day. So you go over to the sleeping bag, and you just get close to it, and you can push the button to lay down. And it says, call it a day. And you could just rest your eyes uh, or to get back up, or you could just say sleep until tomorrow, which is what we'll do. So we finished year one, Sunday one, and it gives you a summary of what you did. You could see that we not only were getting permit points for leveling up our skills, so we leveled up our foraging skill significantly. Look at that. All the way up to level three. We didn't earn any dinks. Uh, I was calling them dinkums. They're just dinks, I guess because we didn't sell anything, but we have a lot of prospective dinks in our inventory. All right, and someone is visiting the island and the game has been saved. So typically to save the game, just like in Stardew, uh, Traveler's Rest, many of these games, Graveyard Keeper, you have to sleep to save the game. So we've slept, we got to a new day, um, it's 7 a.m., and we have new daily tasks, which you see in the bottom left. And, you know, I think I might... I'm not sure if they awarded the daily milestones or if I needed to go claim them. But let's just pretend like we got them. We did all of the tasks. If it was my fault for not gathering them... I apologize, but I couldn't see a way to move my cursor over there, so I was just, you know, assuming, probably incorrectly, that we got them. Anyway, everyone, this is a good place to end our first episode of this Complete Beginner's Guide to Dinkum. We completed day one. Look how peaceful we are in our sleeping bag. We have done a tremendous amount of work, but there's so much more to learn about the game and we'll get to those in the next episodes. I hope you're finding this to be fun and helpful. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions about the game, please post those in the comments below. Take care.